Hi everyone, my name is Malisha, and in this video we'll be continuing our Get Started example and introducing DVC experiments. So experiments are a feature that's only available in DVC 2.0 and higher of course, so make sure you're running the latest version of DVC. So just a little background on experiments. We all know that we run a lot of experiments in machine learning projects where there are a lot of parameters to tune or just a lot of permutations of the code. Usually we track this through git commits, but with DVC experiments, we can organize our projects and really keep only what we need and do all of that without polluting our repo with a bunch of git commits. So once you have the parameters tuned to your liking or you have the code at the right iteration you want, you can discard all of your experiments and not have to worry about a lot of commits still staying in your repo. Of course, if you want more details about how experiments work, you can head over to our docs website and take a look at all of the details there. But for this part, Remember that last time we learned how to tune our ML pipelines and compare those changes. So now we're going to increase the number of features in our featureize stage and see what difference that makes. So this time we'll be using the DVC exp run command and this makes it really easy to change our hyperparameters and run a new experiment. So in your terminal we're going to run DVC exp run and we're going to use this set param flag. I'll explain that in just a bit. And we'll update our featureize.max features. And we'll set that equal to 3000. So this is going to start a new experiment run. And this is very similar to what happens when we run DVC repro. It just has a few more added conveniences for experiments. So that dash dash set param flag, it sets the value for our parameters and you'll see that's been updated in our params.yaml here. So once this has finished running, we'll be able to compare any changes and again, any edits that we make to dependencies, whether it's parameters or the source code, it'll be reflected in our experiment run. But let's go ahead and take a look at that diff. So if we run DVC exp diff, you'll see the change in our values. You'll see the change in our parameters. And all of this is related to what we have updated in our experiment with just that simple um, dash dash set param flag. Now that you see how we use diffs in our experiments, I want to introduce you to a really cool feature with DVC experiments. So most of the time when you're working on a machine learning project, you'll want to update multiple hyperparameters several times just to see how it affects the performance of your training model. And we can do that very easily with queues in DVC experiments. So far, we've just been tuning the params in the featureize stage, but there's also parameters for our train stage. And this trains using a random forest classifier. So what we want to do is set up several experiments with different hyperparameters and not run them quite yet. So the way we're going to do that is by setting up five different queues in our DVC experiments. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste a lot of commands from our docs. So if you head over to our docs site, you'll see in this experiments there's this queuing experiment section and I'm going to be copying the commands just from this section here. So first I'll take this DVC exp run with Q and we update some parameters and I will come back to our terminal and paste that in here. And you'll notice up here 
very briefly, it will update the parameters in this train stage. And I want to show you how that corresponds to the actual stage. And here in our DVC YAML, you'll see that inside of the train, we have this param section with the parameters corresponding to our section here in the params.yaml. But we have one queue set up, so let's go ahead and set up the other four queues. And I'll still be copying and pasting these commands from that page of the docs website. So you'll still see just those parameters change as we're adding queues here. I'm going to clear this so I make sure you can see the commands that are being run right now. Then we have three more to copy and paste in. So I'll do that. And again, you can see the little changes in the params.yaml. And we'll go ahead and wrap up with the other two commands. So now we have our five queues set up and you can look at the values we have here. So we've set up several queues. Now we're going to run them all in parallel using a job with another command that I'm going to copy and paste from our docs. And this is how we'll run all of those experiments at the same time. And you'll notice that it's running the train stage with all of those different parameter combinations. Okay, now that we have all of those queued jobs and they've run, let's look at how we compare all of these experiments. If you remember in the previous section when we were looking at our plots, we just ran DVC plots show. There's a very similar command for experiments and it'll show us a table. So in this case, we'll run DVC exp show. And this brings up a table with all of those experiments we had queued up and it has all of the different values, but you see it goes just a little bit off screen. So I'm gonna close out of here and we're just going to add a few different flags to clean up this um, table a bit. This is another thing that I'm going to copy and paste from our docs website. So it's on that same page that we copied and pasted all of the cues from. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here. And you'll notice that we get rid of the timestamp and we only show a couple of the parameters here. So I'll go ahead and hit enter and you'll see it brings up this table that's a little bit easier for us to see. So this has all of the different params that we updated. You'll see that we have our different NEST values and our different min splits. But if you take a look at our rock AUCs, experiment C68E0 gives us the best value. So we know that these parameters here are the best params for our model. Now that we have this and we have a name for the experiment, the cool thing that DVC lets us do is we can persist experiments. So now that we know what the best parameters are, we'll keep that experiment and ignore the rest and we will just apply this particular experiment to our workspace and continue working from there. To do that, we'll go ahead and clear out our terminal. And now we're going to run a new command. But before you do that, if you don't remember what your experiment ID was, go ahead and copy that from the table here because you're going to need that. So I'm going to close that again. And now we'll run DVC exp apply. And then you can paste in that ID. And we'll get this little message saying that the changes from that experiment have been applied to our workspace. So 
DVC EXP apply is very similar to DVC checkout, except it works with exper experiments instead. So DVC tracks everything in the pipeline for our experiments, including the metrics, the parameters, dependencies, and the outputs, and it lets us retrieve things later as we need them. So since our experiment has been applied to the workspace, it's really no different from reproducing the result without DVC EXP run. So just to show you, let's take a look at our scores JSON and you'll see we have those optimized um, values in here. Before we do anything else, let's go ahead and commit our changes to Git. First, let's check out what all has changed. So we definitely want to commit these files. And let's take a look at just a quick diff. So we're going to do git diff dash dash params dot yaml. Oh, not that. Make the space there. And you'll see that this is the difference between our params. You'll see the difference in our training params, just to give you a quick check on what actually changed in our parameters. But now that we know the files that have changed, the parameters that have changed, let's go ahead and add all of these changes to our workspace. So I'm just going to run git add dot and we can go ahead and commit these with the message of, uh, let's say, preserve best random forest run. Okay, now that we've added all of these changes to our Git history, let's talk about how we can do some cleanup for our experiments. So I've cleared the terminal to make sure that you can see the commands on top of my little video over here. And we're going to go back a few commits, a few um, commands and show our table again. Now you'll see that all of the experiments we had before aren't showing. Don't worry, they're still there, but by default, DVC EXP show only shows experiments since the last commit. So this is only showing the experiments we have in the latest commit. It's not showing everything before that. But it's okay because those previous experiments are still in the cache and we can show or apply them. So one way to do that is with the dash in flag and we can use that to show our experiments from the previous however many commits we want. So I'm going to copy and paste another command from the docs, but first I'll close out this and I'll paste that command in here and you'll see the dash in with two. So this is going to take us back to our experiment results from two commits ago. And you see we have all of those um, old values, we have everything that we ran in our queues here. It hasn't gone anywhere, it's just in the cache now. But eventually, after you've run enough experiments, old experiments will probably start to clutter this table, and we'll want to clean that up. So to do that, we want to use the DVC EXP GC um, command. And this removes all of the references to old experiments. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that table, clear the terminal again, and we'll run DVC EXP GC. And we will add just this little workspace flag here. And this is telling us it's going to remove the experiments from our workspace of the current repo. And I'll go ahead and say yes. So those experiments have been removed. And if I go up a couple of commands and look at our table again, we will see that all of those experiments have been removed. That's exactly what we would expect to see. And remember, DVC EXPGC 
only removes the references to experiments. It does not remove the cached objects associated with them. If you want to clean up the cache, you'll need to use DVC GC. But that's it for this Get Started tutorial. I hope it was helpful and you learned how to do some cool stuff with DVC. And if you have any questions or you need more detail on anything, you can always head over to the docs. You can reach out to us on Discord or you can reach out to us in the forums.